Hi, this is Ryan at Clovisor.com. It's uh, May 26, 2017, and I'm here to talk about the religion of climate change. Uh, so, you know, there's been this movement of uh, asserting that there's global warming, and for a long time they called it global warming. Now they call it climate change, and the reason why is that they had all these predictions. They had these climate models, these charts that said, okay, based on these synthesized models, we should be seeing an increase of climate, of global warmth by so much. And then from 1978 forward to till now, uh, we see that in the last 19 years of those roughly 40 years, the climate has not had a net increase in temperature. So these climate models were wrong. And so then they called it, instead of global warming, now they call it climate change. And so, you know, with all of this change and all of these, you know, debunked theories, now there's a stronger effort, especially by governments that want to tax people on carbon and things like that, to reassert that there is this consensus in science. And the consensus is, is that they say 97% of scientists say that climate change, aka global warming, is real. And uh, so if you take it at face value, you think, all right, well, humans are causing a significant climate change and the globe is warming because of it and we're in dire peril. Um, but what it breaks down to, and I have posted this many times and you can see some of my links. Um, let's see if I can get you these here and I'll post these in the description um, that these scientists that they claim support their idea that humans are causing catastrophe only are recorded as being supporters of this theory, of this consensus, um, because they feel like humans contribute, and it doesn't say how much, there's no measurement, somewhat to climate change, somewhat to global warming. Um, but the, the devil is in the details how much. They don't ever say how much um, qualifies as, you know, their 97% consensus how much of human contribution is contributing to the change in climate and, and global warming. Um, Dr. Roy Spencer and others, uh, I've got his link here. Um, Dr. Roy Spencer says, yeah, I'm part of that 97% consensus, but they also call me a climate denier. And if you go to this list right here um, at opinions.clovistar.com forward slash climate list, you'll see a playlist on YouTube that I've got. Um, in fact, it's right here, of a bunch of scientists that they count and they reference in their, you know, peer-reviewed papers and such as these people support this theory. But then in other, you know, in uh, congressional hearings and, and other papers, they call these same people climate deniers because while they believe that humans contribute slightly to climate change, they do not believe humans have a significant contribution to climate change. So it doesn't matter how much you believe humans contribute to climate change. If you believe humans contribute even a fraction of a percent, then you're part of that 97% consensus. And uh, Dr. Roy Spencer in several of these videos talk about it. Um, I've got um, four climate scientists in this video that talk about it. Um, Prager University did a report on this. And I've put a bunch of these together. Uh, Dr. William Happer of Princeton, um, he's a physicist. Uh, a lot of these people have put this issue to rest about this 97% um, consensus. So if we go into the details, I had a discussion with somebody recently, but I want to I want to just go into the hilarious claims of some of these um, TV personalities. First of all, Bill Maher who says, oh, everybody wants to go to Mars because, you know, the Earth is destined to fail. And that he says that the Earth's, um, you know, destiny of failure can be reversed by implying or, or applying these laws to curb climate change, and that this trend is reversible, and so on and so forth. Trend of what, 19 years of not having any net gain of uh, warmth? Um, which you can see here, and I, I've got multiple um, multiple diagrams showing that. I mean, 
roughly 0.28% of greenhouse gases are contributed by human activity. Um, there's just a lot of it. But let me play Bill Mars here uh, on the subject of climate change, and then I'll play a little bit more to correct him. To Bill, Bill calling, calling for a manned, manned mission, mission to Mars, Mars by, by 2033, which NASA estimates would cost $450 billion. Mars? More like mars -a lago Here's a crazy idea. If we're going to take the challenge to overhaul a planet, let's do this one. Let me spell it out in simple terms. Mars is an airless, lifeless, freezing shithole. Look at this scientific chart. Earth. Air. Mars. No air. Earth. Mostly water. Mars. Maybe a little water far below the surface, or maybe not. In any event, don't bother waiting for the busboy to fill your glass. Mars. Eight months away by spaceship. Earth. You're here. You're home. The temperature on Mars at night runs a balmy minus 25 to a quite chilly 76 below. So remember to bring a sweater. Hey, if you really want to explore something cold and hard, how about the facts? Facts that confirm that climate change is killing us, but completely doable policies could reverse it. Millions of years of evolution shaped us to thrive here and only here on Earth. Fuck me. Okay, so anyway, uh, he's saying that, you know, these things that we can do will reverse climate change. That is incorrect. The Earth has not only been warmer than it is now, much warmer, it has also been much cooler. Climate change happens regardless of humans present or not. The dinosaurs didn't have a choice. You know, they had comets. They had um, other issues, you know, that wrecked, uh, you know, their species. And it's gone over and over and over in a cycle for like every 26,000 years. We have major shifts. We have the axis of the Earth's... Um, tilt one direction and then switch we have a oblong rotation around the sun which we get closer and further away from the sun the sun is responsible for our heat and for our lack of heat um, in relation to its distance to the earth and then we also have a wobbly um, spin so you know the every every bit of that changes our uh, climate and then you know we talk about carbon well you know, as, as a marijuana grower in my life, I grew marijuana off and on for 15 years. And I know that when you inject uh, certain amounts of carbon into your atmosphere, where your plants are, into your greenhouse, that helps the plants grow. It's plant food. Carbon is plant food. So when you increase carbon, more plants grow. There's more fauna, uh, you know, and it increases... Um, uh, oxygen production, oxygen that cools the planet, so on and so forth. So carbon is good because it feeds plants. Plants are good for cooling the earth, so on and so forth. Uh, that's a good cycle. Uh, you can look into it. You know, they sell major outfits, very expensive kits to inject your plants with carbon, you know, on a rotation. You do it at night, put a little bit more carbon in the atmosphere, then you reduce it in the daytime and, you know, kind of do a cycle, you know, and there's all kinds of different, you know, methods of it, but it's definitely plant food. Carbon is good for plants. Uh, many of these scientists, many of them that are on my playlist actually say that. that carbon is good for plants. Carbon is good for the earth. Carbon is good for cooling the earth. Um, I really implore you to take a look at this list. These are all well-qualified climate scientists, and they set the record straight. Um, now, if you wanted to watch Bill Maher's little deal on that, you can go to this link. And, of course, all of these links are in the description. But let me just play this uh, Nobel uh, laureate that uh, he is a climate scientist and he disagrees with human contributions that increase climate change dramatically. Global warming is really a hot topic and what I said then, and which I still believe, is that global warming really has become a new religion. Because you can't discuss it. It's not proper. If you say global... See, if you, see, if you look at Linda here today, then all the people who are, you know, notable people, they have said climate change in their talks. All of them have said it. I don't know whether they know what they mean, but they have said it anyway. Everybody talks about climate change. 
So the American Physical Society, which I was a member, said the evidence is incontrovertible that global warming exists. Now think about that. This is a physical society. And they say you cannot discuss global warming because we believe it's happening. It's like the Catholic Church. There are lots of incontrovertible truths in the Catholic Church, I'm sure. And here there's an incontrovertible truth in a physical society. So the only, only answer to that is to resign. So Anyway, so uh, more on him, and he is also in that list. Um, Iver Gevier, um, can't know, I can't pronounce it right. I'm sure that's pronounced differently. Um, but check out his video. Uh, well respected, Nobel Prize nominee, so on and so forth. Uh, now back to some of these other guys, like Roy Spencer. Roy Spencer worked for NASA for decades. Uh, advised many presidents and many administrations in the United States under NASA, um, created many of the tools that climate scientists today use to measure the climate. And he dem demonstrates what these RSS, uh, let, let me uh, pull up the RSS graphs here. Um, he explains what these mean. Now, the yellow line is the synthesized data, the climate models from 1978 forward, um, this is their projection that they thought climate would increase this much. And I had a guy say, no, 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 those are just two different models of real data. That's not true. The yellow model is synthetic. It is a, um, as it says here, uh, each of these plots in the time series of the TLT temperature anomalies using reference period 1979 to 2008. In each plot, the blue band is 5% to 95% envelope for the RSS. Uh, this is a rem uh, remote satellite system is what RSS is standing for. Uh, temperature uncertainty assemble for a detailed explanation of the uncertainty assemble. See Mears et al. 2011. Uh, the yellow band shows 5% to 95% envelope for the results of the 33 CMIP5 model. This is a, another satellite they're referencing. Um, 19 different models, many, and, and these are just models. These aren't actual data. The yellow is models, not data, not actual uh, measurements, um, with multiple realizations that are intended to simulate the Earth's climate over the 20th century. So this is a simulation, the yellow line, and the actual measurements are in the blue line. And you can see uh, from 1997 till now, there has not been a net increase in climate. But if we go by what these climate models say they should be, we should have increased significantly. We should have doubled our temperature here till here. The increase, as you can see, should have doubled and it has not. So the, the point is, and, and I got this guy on Facebook and he's saying, okay, so post a link. Uh, so he posts this link. Um, he says, I'm, I'm just pointing out that the difference between those years and the rate of, I better move this over, I'm, I've got to edit some of this stuff out. Uh, looking at the bands, yes, the blue band, RSS, uh, remote satellite system, temperature uncertainty assemble, not the 1-1 one, one and the yellow band, uh, but the blue band is not actual climate change. It is more of a margin of error, as explained. And so he goes to this. I'll uh, put a link to this stuff as well. Um, and so I had to go back, and Roy Spencer actually talked about these diagrams at Congress. He's the one that made the tools that measured these, that met many of the tools that measured this um, data. Um, so, And RSS is a private group, a uh, private company, remote sensing systems, uh, is a, so I, I got it wrong, I'm sorry, I said remote satellite systems. Remote sensing systems, uh, they use satellites, is a scientific research company located in Northern California, specializing in satellite microwave remote sensing on Earth, established in 1974, blah, blah, blah. And anyway, um, Roy Spencer, as well as some of these other scientists that I've got listed in my playlist, actually gave their um, testimony on this graph and on these models on the simulation model and on the actual data model showing that there has not been a net increase in temperature in the last 19 years. Global warming is a hoax. Um, 
at least human caused global warming is a hoax. The, the earth warms and cools on its own based on, like I said, the relationship to the sun, the distance, the oblong rotation, um, orbiting around the sun, uh, the tilt of the earth, the spinning of the earth, um, the oblong, um, I mean, the uh, wobbly spin that we have, and all of that contributes, uh, as well as carbon, which the lacking of carbon increases the temperature, the increase of carbon increases oxygen production, and the oxygen production then cools the earth. It's a cycle. And it continues, uh, whether we're here or not. So I just wanted to really give my point of view on this. I'm not a scientist. That's why I'm listing the scientists. And I've got this list here that I wish uh, anybody who's interested in this would follow. And, uh, you know, if we want to clean up the earth, I think that's a great cause. And that's why I started Hemp Motor Company, hempmotorcompany.com. I believe running biofuel is really good for cleaning up the earth uh, just to be clean, just so we don't have a crappy earth. Um, I don't believe that what we're doing in, you know, humans, in fact, are doing increases the temperature significantly. I, I, I disagree with that from the evidence that I've found. And uh, if you go to this uh, link here, geocraft.com, I've got a short link to it here. You can learn more about it. If you go to opinions.clovisstar.com forward slash geo, you can learn about the different contributions of human activity to greenhouse gases and therefore global warming. But what we do know is the earth has not warmed, has not had a yet war a net warming in the last 19 years. That is a fact. Disagree with it if you want. The data's there. I'm presenting it to you and that's why I made this video. Um, thanks again and hope you tune in to my playlist because I'll be adding more to it as we go. But I've got at least a dozen scientists there, well accredited, Princeton, uh, professors, uh, NASA uh, employees, all this that actually work in climate change on a daily basis, not just people who, you know, remotely observe it like myself, but people who actually who are actually in the field. And uh, they did a great job explaining it. Thanks again. Take care.